Welcome at Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain an American thriller, drama film called Flight. In my opinion it's a stunning movie. The crash is one of the most breathtaking ever filmed. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. Like and subscribe. Your support would be appreciated. The film opens in a hotel room where pilot Whip Whitaker and Katerina Marquez, one of his flight attendants, are just waking up. The state of the room indicates that they had a crazy night of smoking, drinking, and hooking up. When Whip's ex-wife calls to ask about their son, Whip tells her they can chat later and hangs up. Whip is still sleepy while Katerina gets ready and heads to the airport for their next flight. To wake himself up, he takes a line of cocaine and gets ready. Whip then makes his way to the airport and catches the plane. Katerina and another flight attendant named Margaret Thomason greet him. He meets Ken Evans, his co-pilot. Whip requests an aspirin from Margaret as the two get ready for the journey, claiming he hasn't slept in two days. A drug-addicted prostitute named Nicole exits a hotel room somewhere after spending the night with a customer. She goes to, to her dealer's house and requests narcotics from him. She denies his offer to pay her to appear in an immoral film. He sells her a small amount of heroin. The substance hasn't been cut, so the dealer cautions her to use it carefully. Whip and Ken take off from the plane once more in spite of the poor weather. They climb little violently. Whip's strange behavior appears to be noticed by Ken, but he says nothing. Whip requests that the aircraft be flown manually rather than being left on autopilot. As they ascend to a higher altitude, the turbulence becomes more intense. Whip then turns away from the original path to avoid a region of calm air. In an effort to get the plane to a greater height, he accelerates and rises the plane. Ken is concerned about the choice, but Whip reassures him that he is making the right choice. Ken informs flight control that the weather is forcing them off their original course. Whip stabilizes the aircraft and lowers it to a safer altitude. When the turbulence eventually ends, the passengers thank the pilots in appreciation. When Nicole arrives home, her perverse landlord is already there. He is there to request the unpaid rent from her. He is ordered to wait outside while she takes a shower by her. But instead, she gets the medicine out and gives herself an injection. The landlord yells at her to open the door as she begins to feel its effects. Whip exits the cockpit at the same moment to apologize to the passenger for the hasty takeoff. He announces while swilling three mini bottles of vodka into an orange juice. Later, when Margaret enters the cockpit, Whip is sound asleep and the aircraft is on autopilot. Ken receives word from mission control that the aircraft is prepared to descent. Whip is awakened by the plane's violent turbulence as he types a few keys. The travelers begin to fear. Everyone is quickly instructed to buckle their seatbelts by Margaret. Whip and Ken attempt to steer the aircraft, but the steering seems to be broken. They are now making an uncontrolled straight drop. They report the malfunctioning hydraulics to mission control, but they get no helpful responses. Whip asks Ken to dump of the fuel and maintains his calm. In addition, he makes a number of unsuccessful emergency maneuver attempts to recover control of the aircraft. He is aware that saving the jet at this time is impossible. In order to slow the plane down and give them more time to choose a safer landing location, Whip gets some control over the steering and flips the aircraft. The stewardess who previously collapsed turns around and hits the ceiling. When one little boy accidentally releases himself from his seatbelt, the other passengers panic. He is assisted by Katerina, who buckles his seatbelt. Nicole is saved from an overdose below by her landlord and a paramedic. Whip maintains his control once again on the aircraft, but Ken begins to worry. The failure of both engines happens together. Whip flips the aircraft over once again as he prepares to crash land. One of the wings strikes the tower of a church, severing it off, as they gently glide to a field. Then the jet crashes onto the field. Whip is knocked unconscious when his skull collides with the steering yoke. Margaret is sobbing in the background as we observe Katerina's lifeless body lying on the ground. When the paramedics show up, they save both the passengers and the crew. 
the aircraft has split in two. Whip awakens in a hospital bed to find Charlie Anderson, a buddy and a representative of the pilot's union, in his bedside. Charlie commends him for preserving numerous lives. In the end, only six of the 102 passengers on the plane passed away, including four passengers in addition to Katerina and another attendant. He has a comoridden co-pilot. Whip has somehow been able to save a large number of individuals given the condition they were in. The National Transportation Safety Board NTSB interviewers arrive to speak with him and depart after asking a few questions. Soon later, Harling, Whip's friend, delivers Whip some cigarettes or alcohol, but Whip refuses to consume either. Harling tells him that there are journalists waiting to interview him outside his home. Everyone is praising his brave action. Whip requests that Harling bring his clothing and personal items to the hospital since he will be released the following day. Later, while smoking on the hospital stairwell, Whip runs into Nicole, the prostitute who overdosed earlier. The two are joined by an animated cancer patient. The three smoke while discussing various topics. The patient thinks there is no way to prevent events from occurring. The three of them meeting there was inevitable, much like him developing cancer and Whip landing the plane. Whip requests Nicole's address after he departs and makes a future visitation commitment. Harling takes Whip to his family's farmhouse after being released since it is encircled by reporters. He flushes all of the house's alcohol down the drain as he arrives at the farmhouse. He has decided to quit drinking. Later, Whip receives a call from Charlie inviting him to see Hugh Lang, a lawyer. When he arrives to meet them, he learns that the NTSB has learned about his prior drinking. Since someone has to make up for the deaths of the passengers, they'll probably accuse Whip of being drunk, which carries a life sentence. This information is not well received by Whip, who walks to the pub and resumes drinking. On his way home, he goes by Nicole's house and buys a lot of wine. Her landlord is making rude attempts to collect money from her. Whip arrives just in time to remove him from her. He realizes Nicole has nowhere to go and provides the man some money before bringing Nicole to his farmhouse. The two eventually have sex that evening. Whip continues to avoid the media during the following few days, but he soon comes to the realization that those around him might be responsible for damaging his reputation. He meets Margaret during Katerina's funeral, and Margaret states that when she first met Whip that morning, she could tell he was drunk. Whip then begins to get personal, saying that if not for him, she might also have died. Then Whip pays Ken a visit in the hospital. Ken reveals that he didn't share his concerns about Whip's condition at the time with the NTSB, which was looking into the crash. Ken is aware of Margaret's habits, the fact that Whip was buzzed in the cockpit, and the possibility that he was drunk at the time of the collision. Ken and his wife think that his survival was a miracle, despite the fact that he might never walk again. The couple, who are good Christians, insist that Whip join them in prayer, which he does reluctantly. In the meantime, Nicole has been making changes in her life, including obtaining a job at a grocery store and attending self-help groups to overcome her drug addiction. Whip, who wasn't interested in the meeting, left halfway through the one she brought him to. Soon after, Nicole discovers Whip repairing the Cessna in his dad's garage. Whip tries to convince Nicole to board a plane with him for Jamaica. She halts him and says he needs treatment, which enrages Whip. Following an argument between the two, Nicole storms into the house. Nicole gives him a note the next morning and departs the farmhouse carrying her belongings. Whip begins to drink more after she leaves, saddened by her leaving. When he returns to his property one day, he finds reporters waiting for him. He hurries to his ex-home wife since he has nowhere else to go. However, his family doesn't want him there because he's drunk. After a fight with his son, Whip is expelled from the house. He is surrounded by the reporters outside. He provides evasive responses to their questions and escapes. Whip's drinking angers Charlie. He is making it more difficult for them to demonstrate that he wasn't drunk when they were flying by drinking every day. Whip stays with Charlie for the following eight days. Whip still needs to give his side of the tale to Ellen Block, the NTSB investigator, 
despite Hugh's success in getting Whip's alcohol test overturned on a technicality. Whip is brought to his hotel room the evening before the hearing. That night, his nerves get the better of him. He is unable to rest or read the documents Hugh had prepared for him. The mini-fridge in the room is empty of any alcoholic drinks, which he notices when he opens it. He does, however, find a door that takes him to the next room. That room's mini-fridge is packed with alcohol in its entirety. Whip tries to control himself but fails. The hearing is scheduled for the next day. His door is approached by Charlie and Hugh. They use an extra set of keys to enter when Whip is unable to open it. They are surprised to see the room in disorder with empty alcohol bottles lying around. Whip is in the restroom, extremely drunk and crazy. To bring him some cocaine, he requests that Charlie phone Harling. Since there is no other way to bring Whip back to reality before the hearing, Charlie and Hugh concur. Harling enters the hotel room and takes a puff of cocaine with Whip. Then, Whip gets ready and boldly checks out of the motel. Block doesn't have any suspicions about Whip at the hearing. Instead, she claims that a faulty jack screw in the plane's tail, which was meant to have been repaired a few years ago, was the reason why the plane stopped working. The plane descended as a result of the jack screw's pull on the tail stabilizer. After saying that, though, Block says they discovered two empty vodka bottles in the accident, which were exclusively accessible to the aircraft crew. She goes on to say that Katerina, who has a history of drinking, must have consumed the booze. She then asks Whip his opinion. After a little period of silence, Whip eventually acknowledges that he, not Katerina, drank the vodka. Charlie tries to object but is ignored as everyone in the hearing gasps. Whip ultimately admits that he was high and drunk while flying the aircraft and is still drunk today. The next scene represents Whip inside a prison cell with other inmates. He claims that the hearing was his turning point and that he was forced to stop lying. The hearing took place 13 months ago. He anticipates remaining there for the following four years. He has become more mature and strengthened his relationships with his wife and son while imprisoned. His son is shown going to Whip to learn more about his dad. He describes Whip as the most interesting guy he has ever met and uses his interview as the basis for an essay for college. That's how the movie ends. I find the visuals to be excellent and captivating. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.